sunshine in the sky, the creation and the life all together as one. This is the human heart, central to our physical body, our survival, revered by poets throughout history as the emotional center of our being, the place we instinctively touch when asked to point to ourselves. And now, what we have known intuitively is being understood scientifically. Researchers are unlocking a new science of the heart that could change everything we know about health and our interconnected nature. Coherence is a state of balance between heart, mind, and emotions, creating a favorable cascade of neural, hormonal, and biochemical events that benefit the entire body. But this phenomenon not only benefits us personally, it affects everything around us, emitting an electromagnetic field that can be measured up to three feet outside of the body. When you are in coherence, your heart resonates at the same frequency as the Earth's magnetic field. This frequency positively affects everything around you. When a group of people are in coherence together, this effect is magnified. Could communities synchronized in coherence lower violence, accelerate cooperation, and global harmony? This is the purpose of the Global Coherence Pulse. If we can measure the impact of thousands of people in coherence at the same time, it could lead to a breakthrough in understanding the full potential of the human heart. All you need to participate is your presence and your heart. To take it to the next level, join the research study by downloading the app and getting an HRV monitor to measure your personal coherence. The world needs it more than ever before. Each human heart is unique and magnificent by itself. But imagine what could be possible when we unify. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on the planet right now. Thank you for taking time out of your day today to join us for the Global Coherence Pulse for May 2022. It's a beautiful spring day here on this side of the planet. And if you're on the other side of the planet, perhaps it's a beautiful fall day. And it's a really important time for us to join together and connect our hearts. We've been doing these monthly pulses for over two years now. We've been deepening our partnerships with different organizations and thought leaders and artists, and we've been growing our Islands of Coherence member community, and all for the purpose of supporting us to cultivate greater coherence in the heart of our daily lives and through us into the world as we pulse the planet with our love and our care and our compassion because it's what the life needs most from us right now. We have a special pulse today, and I'm very excited for us to be able to have this day, this day to drop in deeply into our hearts and into our coherence practice and have an impact on the planet in the ways that we can. And I'm gonna bring up a clip from Roland McCready from our last pulse, where he actually shares that these pulses that we have been doing have had an impact. They've been registering in their monitors. So Kaylin, let's bring up this clip of Roland and see what he has to say to help us understand the potency of what we're doing together. The 
the Global Coherence Pulse is really part of a, a larger citizen scientist project. Uh, we're, we're really measuring the effects on the global fields from all of us being here together and um, through the Global Consciousness uh, Project, which we're also becoming the new home for. And uh, so far, most, if not all, of the pulses are actually showing a significant effect on the global field environment. Yay, which is one of our suggestions there is that it's not necessarily the n amount of people to have global, me measurable global effects, but how coherent we are, how uh, when we come together in the heart, in, in a heart coherent state collectively, that we put out a bigger pulse. And that's really what this is all about. And as part of that larger work on really scientifically, I think, uh, verifying what most of us intuitively already know, uh, that is that we all are deeply interconnected uh, with each other, with the earth, the trees, uh, all, all natural systems. Uh, so we're really hoping to uh, to show that, and because uh, uh, for many science is the, the the new religion, and if science says, then we'll we'll put, pay more attention to it, because it's really all about us being more responsible for our being more self responsible for the energies we're feeding the field, and uh, so today. Mm. So we so we have an impact, and it doesn't matter the numbers of people but the quality of our coherence when we come together for this sacred purpose that really matters. I also want to acknowledge today before we do our centering that um, we have a translator today and we're translating into Spanish. So I wanna invite all of our Spanish speaking friends today that have joined us. Thank you, I'm so excited. And perhaps we'll have more and more translations coming as we grow and expand our capacity and our reach. But let's start, as Roland said, the quality of our presence is what we bring to this moment. So let's all just begin by feeling the bottom of our feet, bringing our awareness down to the place where we connect with the earth. I was seeing in the chats, we're from all around the planet. So today, let's bring our presence right to the place in which we live, right into the heart of our life. and to relax and bring our awareness into the center of our heart. And our awareness of us breathing in and out of our heart space. Just a little slower and just a little longer bringing ourselves fully present and relaxing into the now. And just bring to mind something that brings a smile to your face, something that ignites your joy or your gratitude or this something that you just love so much, just bring that presence, that feeling into your heart. And feel the quality of our collective field as we bring in these positive feelings and emotions and nourish ourselves and nourish the field with them. And I really wanna invite us to relax together today, to open today to this very, very, very special pulse. Today's pulse will be 90 minutes. It will include some wisdom sharing from our guest, Sri Preeti Ji. It will include music, it will include a meditation and it will include us sharing some other ways in which you could continue to cultivate greater coherence in the heart of your life. So I want to 
just take this moment now to introduce Sri Preeti Ji, who is our guest today. And I've I've been waiting for this day for a while. She was some with us here in my home in, in Santa Cruz, and I asked her what she wanted her theme to be today. And she said, I want to provide a direct experience of the divine, a direct connection of the divine. So Sri Pritaji is a world-renowned mystic philosopher and luminary who has led millions on a profound journey into consciousness, helping us to find the healing, joy, relationships, and purpose that we're seeking. Being in the presence of this enlightened sage today and being nurtured by her wisdom and led into deeper layers of consciousness through our meditation is a gift and one I invite us to open to receive fully. We are in a safe harbor here of like-hearted community. And so let us open, unite our love and energies and shower the world with our love and grace. Sri Preeti Ji, I am so honored to have you with us today and want to invite you to take us into your loving arms and guide us on a journey today. Namaste. Namaste. Wonderful being with you both. I'm not able to see the rest. I'm glad to be with so many seekers across different parts of the world, pulsing one's heart every day, every month to impact the world consciousness. The single most important mission of ACOM is to create 80,000 enlightened beings on this planet. It is our vision to create 80,000 Buddhas for the earth. And I say 80,000 because we know that it is 0.001% of humanity. When 0.001% of humanity become enlightened, then there would be a phase transition in humanity's consciousness. It will swing away from violence, suffering, and division to peace, oneness, and compassion. Why should people become enlightened? If you were to take a look and look at our own lives and the, and the lives of the world around us, we will find there is so much of unhappiness, so much division, so much separation, selfishness, and conflict. And no matter what progress we make, we're taking the same consciousness there. It is the same consciousness that is manipulating, that is destroying the very progress we are creating. Today we are talking of about going to Mars. And over there, we are already talking about buying and, uh, buying and acquiring real estate in Mars. And already we have decided that we would divide, we would compete, we would compare. And this competition-driven, this comparison-driven mind is touching Mars, even before we have set foot there. We have created a beautiful world, a metaverse, a dream world. But it is the same competition, same greed. It is the same ambition, probably the same self-centeredness that is there in the metaverse as well. Whether we live for a hundred years or a thousand years, 
whether we travel on a yacht or a public transport. Unless until you become enlightened, nothing truly matters. With an unliberated, fettered, suffering consciousness, there is no joy, even if you're married to the best person in the world. And there is no fulfillment, even if you have achieved the greatest in life. Enlightenment is the ultimate human achievement. And it needs to become the most important quest of your life. And enlightenment that we lead seekers to is one that encompasses both. It encompasses self-realization and God-realization. God-realization as an experience of God-consciousness, definitely not as a belief in God. I'm not asking you to cultivate a belief. And if you are a believer in God, I'm not asking you to change your belief system. The journey that we lead seekers, it transcends any form of belief. It transcends an ideology about God. Because every ideology or every belief about God is only in the realm of the mind. And an experience of God consciousness transcends the mind itself. And in this experience, you enter the realm of consciousness. You enter the realm of pure experience. So let me go into God consciousness now. God consciousness is an awakening of your connection to the source. Awakening to your connection to the one field of intelligence that pervades, that, pervade, that permeates the entire universe. And this pervasive field of intelligence is what we call as the universal intelligence. The universal intelligence is embedded within every aspect of the universe, the living and the non-living, that which has biological processes and that which does not have biological processes. This universal intelligence we're talking about is imminent in every atom in every molecule, in matter, in energy, in life forms. It is living intelligence that responds and evolves. And that is why it is a being. That is why it is the soul of the universe. Universal intelligence is like the body. And we are probably, we are like the various parts of the body. And let us say your leg is hurt and it sends a distress, your leg is sending a distress signal to the brain. Then your entire body takes charge of addressing the pain in the leg. Various systems get into action, the cardiovascular system, the endocrine system, the muscular system, the urinary system, the gastrointestinal system, the immune system. All of them come together in a very intelligent way to stop that pain. Just like that. When you genuinely have a connection with the universal intelligence or the being of the universe. And when you are in need, 
and your, when your intention is very clear, you will send a signal to the universal intelligence. And this signal will evoke a response. The divine either answers your prayer or dissolves the desire. God consciousness is a state of being where you are awake to this vast, infinite, benevolent intelligence, an intelligence that responds to you. And I believe one of the fundamental reasons for humanity's suffering is that it has lost this precious experience of God consciousness. The nature has designed human beings to have this experience of connection with God consciousness, to have this experience of connection with the universal intelligence. And today I would love to lead you on an exploration. I would love to lead you on a meditation on God consciousness or the divine or the universal intelligence, however you relate. To experience, to discover, and to connect with the universal intelligence, you have to go through a journey of self-realization. This is what happens at Akam. Thousands of seekers who come to Akam have this experience of God-realization when they embark on a journey of self-realization. I believe that self-realization is the foundation upon which God-realization could happen. Without the foundation of self-realization, how many ever great experiences you may have of the universal intelligence or the transcendent, you will fall back into the same old traps of suffering. Because how can there be trust or faith on the universal intelligence? Or how can there be trust or faith in the transcendent? When you are stuck in your own suffering states of hurt, anger, anxiety, sadness, and disappointments, you will undoubtedly project these suffering states upon the universal intelligence too. Like you would wonder if your partner loves you. Just, just, just that, that way, how you wonder if your partner loves you. You would also wonder if the divine loves you. Just like how you feel disappointed with the members of your family. You feel disappointed with the divine. Just like how you live in fear of tomorrow and you lose trust in life, you do lose trust in the divine, in the universal intelligence. It is not possible that you have one heart for the world and another heart for the experiencing the universal intelligence of the God consciousness. So self-realization is about transforming your consciousness. And only then there can be a true and a powerful awakening that can happen to you, powerful awakening to the transcendent. Let me give a glimpse of what it means to awaken to the universal intelligence. There are six stages that you would walk through on the path of God realization as a seeker. And as your consciousness moves from one stage to the next, it is an evol evolutionary trajectory. You go beyond the cycle of belief and no belief into the realm of discovery now. The first stage of God realization is called Valya Avastha or the stage of childhood, which is 
the most dominant nature of childhood? It is wanting. You're constantly asking, constantly craving for something or the other. When your connection with the universal intelligence is in Bali Avastha, then it is this wanting and expectation that you is the experience that you have with the divine. And when they are met, you are happy, you're full of faith, you're full of trust. You feel secure in the universal intelligence, like how a happy child is. But when you're not met, it could be a material want, it could be an emotional want. If it's not meant, met, you move into deeper and deeper suffering. And in the process, you lose faith, you lose trust in the universal intelligence. And you live from a state of anger and dissatisfaction. In Bali Avastha, in this stage, there is no spiritual wisdom. You are giving into your nonstop wanting, you're giving into your craving. And your connection with the divine, with the universal intelligence, is swinging in opposites. There are moments of great connection, there are moments of disconnection with the universal intelligence. So that's the first stage. The second stage, you enter Vartika Avastha or a stage of training. To understand this stage of training, let me tell you a funny story. Uh, one man was returning back home and on the way he sees a date tree that is full of dates and tempted to eat some, he climbs up the tree very fast and plucks as many as he could carry. And when he tries to get down, his courage fails him. He begins to pray to God so that he could come down safely. He makes an agreement with the God that if he receives God's help in return for the favor, he would feed a hundred poor people in his village. As soon as he climbs down 50%, suddenly his mind begins to tell him, this climb isn't so hard. Unnecessarily, I've committed so much to God. It's a waste of money. So he changes the agreement, brings it down by 50%. Then when he is 75% down the tree, the man regrets even more for the promise he made to God, brings down the number further to 10 people. Finally, as he lands down, he tells himself, okay, let me be a good man. I will feed one man because because I have promised God and I should not break it. And continues to think on his way home, who is the leanest fellow in my village who would eat very little? So in the second stage, you become a trader. Your connection with the universal intelligence is around giving and taking. You offer something <laughs> you offer something <clears throat> sorry. You offer something that you feel would appease the universal intelligence. And in return, the universal intelligence would grant you something that would make you happy. You become calculated. You doubt, you mistrust. There is no true generosity that is flowing out of you because your heart is closed. There is no love for the divine. You think like a trader. How can I get the most by giving the least? That is the second stage. The third stage on this path is adharsha or being an idealist. In this stage, you strive very hard to be good because you believe by being good, you would please God. You believe you would make God happy. You believe you will become close to God. You will be in the constant grace of God and you will receive spiritual rewards. You obsess with the ideals of generosity, of forgiveness, 
it is actually, this obsession is not actually leading you into a rapturous connection with the universal intelligence. You are still engrossed with yourself because your mind, because you are busy fighting your mind. You strive very hard to live up to the ideals. You strive to be good, to be kind to everyone. Be patient, be forgiving, be generous, be self-disciplined. You try to inculcate every virtue that you believe would appease God or would win God's love or would bring grace into your life. At this stage, you experience immense struggle, I would say, against yourself because you are not truly embodying these states. You are trying to forgive despite being angry and hurt. You're trying to be compassionate and kind despite having judgments and cold indifference towards the other. You're trying to be generous despite wanting not to share your wealth and your positions. Who you are and what you try to do are totally in misalignment as there is an enormous conflict within you. And after these humongous efforts to be good, when you feel that the divine has not answered your prayers or else has not reached out to you in a moment of need, then you move into immense disappointment and you move into disconnection. You move into blaming yourself. You blame the universal intelligence. You become stuck with the why questions. There is... You ask, despite my goodness, despite my virtue, despite my generos generosity, why is this happening to me? And this could be a lifelong obsession. You encounter a painful situation in life and you feel God or the universal intelligence has been unfair in giving you this pain, despite of your goodness, despite of your effort to be righteous. I would say in these three stages, the first three, you are immersed in ignorance. They reflect a consciousness that is not awakened. Please understand that self-realization cannot happen when you judge yourself or when you feel ashamed about yourself. Self-realization does not happen when you are self-righteous and you justify yourself. Self-realization happens in non-judgmental awareness of the truth. And when a passionate prayer arises from that awareness. I would like you to close your eyes for a few moments now. I would like you to take this journey inward. Just relax and walk with me. Breathe slowly. Recognize your in-breath and your out-breath. Inhale and exhale consciously. spiritual warrior walking on the path of truth. Observe for a few moments the state that disconnects you from the divine. Do you become a child obsessed with your wants and needs? Or do you become a trader and become obsessed with what you're giving 
and what you're receiving. Or do you strive to be good and virtuous to appease God? the universal intelligence in the sacred space of your heart. Ask the divine, the universal intelligence to free you from the traps of ignorance that pull you into suffering and that disconnects you from experiencing the limitless love and the blessings of the divine. Continue. The fourth, fifth, and the sixth stages that I will describe now are the destinations that you have to walk towards. If you are passionate about having a beautiful connection with the universal intelligence. At the fourth stage, you become a premi or a lover of the universal intelligence. I've often seen that when seekers at Aka move into an awareness of the divine as the indweller in their hearts, and not only their hearts, when they move to the awareness that the divine is in the hearts of all living beings, they enter an incredible field of love and grace. 
being the antaryamin or the indweller. The divine guides them through the toughest of challenges and life situations. The divine becomes their beloved friend. It be the divine becomes their loving teacher, a caring parent, and hand holds them through life. Let me share with you a real life incident. In the field of awakening journeys that happen all around the world, there was one participant who suffered a chronic anxiety disorder. His anxiety was so uncontrollable that he had to medicate himself to sleep. And the cause of his anxiety was his business. And he's an investor and he's under constant pressure to make sure that his, perform, his funds perform well and the clients are not unhappy with him. As the graph goes up and the markets are good, he's happy. But as soon as the graph drops, he moves into worry, he moves into anxiety. And because of his poor inner state, every aspect of his life begins to break down. His wife who loved him so much started to wonder if she would be able to live with such a man who's obsessed all the time was probably absent most of the time. His son is becoming a gaming addict. His daughter is becoming depressed and her, his health himself, he himself had a health problem. At this stage, he came to the field of awakening. The first massive awakening was experiencing the divine or the universal intelligence in his heart. The divine became a living presence to him where whom he could see and whom he could feel everywhere. In one of the processes that I led people through, it was a particular process to help the seekers become free of the ancestral samskaras. And as he participated in that, he had a revelation of the origin of his anxiety. And during that meditation, he also had a mystical vision. He had a revelation of how his ancestors' lives was. Three generations ago, his family had been a refugee to another land and they were very poor laborers in that country. And conditions were so bad that they had to they had to gather the grain from the mill, from the, from, the, from the mill as he's sweeping. And he would take the dust and make that into a porridge. At that moment, in those times, every meal was a struggle. As the process continued and we moved into Diksha, he felt a powerful jolt of energy flow into him as if something heavy left his body. Soon after this experience, his face completely changed. His body language changed. He felt different. And back home, he explained his experience to his mother. And his mother confirmed that the ancestors did have a very tough life for a, a short period, and they barely survived in that period. After this transcendental experience, he never got back to that state of anxiety. In fact, he's very calm about challenges in business and his colleagues are really astonished and shocked. Every moment this man feels guided by the divine and his life feels like a beautiful harmonious flow. So the fourth state, is when you evolved to being a premi or the lover of the divine. The fifth and the sixth stages happen to you when you move into enlightened states of consciousness. In the fifth stage, you become a jnani or a wise one. And in the sixth stage, you become a mukta or the one who is liberated. At this stage, you begin to see that the creator and the creation as 
being inseparable. Your eyes of wisdom open. And you begin to see if you have You, you actually begin to see that you have understood the ways of the divine and you have understood the nature of reality itself. That is, in an ordinary state, you are attached to a certain events hap happening and you are averse to certain events happening. You want a particular result to happen and you resist a particular outcome. You're drawn to a certain situation or drawn to certain people or you feel repelled by certain situations or certain people. A jnani is someone who transcends this downward pull or gravity of attachment and aversion. A jnani is one who rises above them, beyond aversion and attachment, and witnesses everything as a flow of events, as situations. To a jnani, life is a flow. The universe is a flow. A wise one is not attached to the outcome because their understanding of reality is totally different. Reality is vast, limitless field of possibilities. And anything can happen at any moment. They do not feel limited. They do not feel bound by conditions. To them, at any moment, anything can arise and anything can go. Today, quantum physics has come to very close to this view of reality that our ancient sages and seers had. It says, nature and universe do not have a fixed outcome for any process. It allows every possibility and every eventuality that can happen in that moment. When you are not attached to one outcome or one particular kind of event or situation, then you begin to see everything as a play. To a jnani, the universe is a leela or the play of the divine. And the stage above being a jnani, that is beyond jnani, is totally liberated one or a mukta. To a mukta, everything is the universal intelligence. There is no place where universal intelligence is not there. No moment when the universal intelligence is absent. The separation between the mundane and the transcendental has dissolved. the last three stages that I described to you are that towards which you need to walk. It is a path that you need to walk to have this God realization. I will be leading you into a meditation now. You will move through the four stages of chanting of Om. The first stage will be to chant loud. The second stage will be to chant like a whisper, only through the movement of your lips. The third stage is to chant mentally without even moving your lips. And the fourth stage is to become still and allow the mantra or the chant to echo in your heart. It's not a very difficult mantra. We're just going to chant Om. So please close your eyes. Breathe slowly. Be present to every inhalation and exhalation.
and channeled to all of you. And I want you to move through the four stages as I guide you. Begin to chant along loudly with your voice. Now chant like a whisper. and mentally now. stay still, hear the chant echoing in your heart, Thank you. 
middle of your chest. The space is called Hridaya Kamala or the heart lotus. Feel your heart as a beautiful and a sacred space of worship. Your heart is a temple. An altar of the divine. Now connect to the divine in any form or in any way that is close to your heart. And ask the divine to come and be seated in your heart lotus. And fill your heart with the sacred presence.
your next path or the next step on this path of awakening would happen in the field of awakening journey that are lead seekers from around the world. In the field of awakening, you would receive four spiritual gifts. An awakening to a direct personal experience of the divine within you. Second is you will awaken to a state beyond the incessant chatter of the mind into a state of freedom and witness. You have a path to get there. Third is you will become free of the negative samskaras or the energy impressions that are flowing in your consciousness from your past, your childhood, and from your ancestors. And the fourth is the entirety of your journey in a field of awakening. You will be led on a transcendental journey powered by the divine. You will receive Diksha from me. Diksha is a divine phenomenon. It is a divine blessings. You will receive a Diksha from me, both for your heartfelt intention and for your enlightenment. And definitely your journey does not end with these four days. You will be handheld and you will be nurtured by a community of dasas or teachers, even after you return. So the next field of awakening is happening in Los Angeles. It is from the 23rd of June to the 26th of June. It has been a joy being with all of you. And I would love to see all of you at the field of awakening. Mm -hmm. and I would like to offer heartfelt appreciation to Teresa. Oh, what happened? We can hear you. Yes. Um, Teresa, thank you so much. And the entire team at the Global Coherence Pulse. Mm. Thank you. I'll share some links to um, both ECOM and to your event in Los Angeles. Um, and you offered a special gift for all of the people who are on the call today. So, so we'll do that. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. So let's just stay in this sacred place in the center, the altar of our hearts, as we watch this video with Melen as a blessing for our hearts, just to saturate in this beautiful energy.
Ah, so beautiful seeing all of the love just pouring in on the chat for Sri Prichiji and just want to say thank you so much for that beautiful meditation. Boy, I just really went into this deeper place and the altar in my heart. It was so beautiful. And I, I'm going to share my screen for a few minutes so that you um, get a little bit more understanding of, of, um, of what's being provided, what's available. Um, here we go. This, this month in the, um, in the islands of coherence in the global coherence pulse, the theme is presence. Really coming in and making that turn from our relationship to life that's external, what we're looking at and moving it inward to the place that we're looking from and having that be where we have our attention and our love. As Sri Prichiji said, Ekam uh, is a world center for enlightenment. And here she is with her partner, Sri Krishnaji. And you can find more about Ekam at ekam.org. And this is where hundreds and thousands of people have gathered um, for events and for tapas and for diksha, um, uh, really coming to a state of enlightenment. So. We feel the energy of Ekam every time Sri Prijanji joins us and, and we receive the blessing of this oneness field. Uh, this is the event that Sri Prijanji was just talking about in Los Angeles. It's a four day event. And um, if you use the link that you got in the chat, um, they offered a thousand dollars off the price for those of us that are on the Global Coherence Pulse call today. And I was told that this discount would last until the event begins. So you have a little time. You don't have to rush like today, but to, to get this on your calendar and, and take it into your heart and see if this is something uh, that you want to do. And with this um, connection with her today, perhaps your heart is telling you what you need. There's also uh, something that they offer called a breathing room. Uh, I subscribe to it. There's so many beautiful resources there. And so if you're looking for something that will really help keep bringing you back to the altar of your heart, um, you might check it out. It's a beautiful offering. And that video that I was just playing uh, is from Melan, And she has some of the most exquisite music especially when you just want to settle in to the purity of heart, to, to kind of that sense of like grace and angelic energy. Uh, I think Mei Lin's music, um, and oftentimes she sings with a partner, uh, is just ecstatic. So um, just wanted to give us a taste of that today. And as I said, the Global Coherence Pulse and the Islands of Coherence have been nourishing a um, a a learning community, a community of practice. Um, and we have just launched a new virtual retreat, just started, and we close registration on Monday. And the purpose of this is for us to cultivate greater coherence in the heart of our daily lives and through us into the world. And we're doing that in a sacred container of community. And we have a beautiful online space that, that provides a container where we can not only receive content and wisdom, but we can share with each other because this isn't a course. It's actually a container where everyone inside of it is committing to great cultivating greater coherence in the heart of our lives. We're committing to this next three months, putting our time and attention on cultivating greater coherence and doing so in a community of others doing the same. And in the islands of the coherence and the global coherence pulse, we believe that this is the moment right now where cultivating greater coherence, greater sustained 
coherence, our capacity to respond with love in the face of whatever we're facing is essential right now. This is the moment when the system is far from equilibrium and it's small islands of coherence in this sea of chaos, in this breakdown of what's no longer serving that supports the system to arise to a higher order. So in this retreat, instead of just these monthly times that we come together, we come together every week in, in our beautiful virtual main hall. We can make our environment as beautiful as we'd like. And we're exploring over those three months, three main themes, presence, resonance, and emergence. Simple foundational focus to bring more attention inward to this altar of our hearts where the divine resides and we rise up from that place. And we have things like beautiful fireside chats. This one's happening on Monday where we bring in evolutionary leaders and artists to share intimately and openly about their own experiences. And we have one each month with beautiful friends. We also have musically enhanced um, integration sessions where we take that theme for the month and we bring it into ourselves and we allow music to help us really embody it. And we have in the body sessions where we take what we're exploring in these themes and we keep bringing them right into the heart of our life, right into our awareness daily, right into our bodies so that we are transforming from the inside out. That's what this three months is dedicated to. And there's beautiful offerings that are optional throughout the week. So if you really want to put this purpose first, the cultivating greater sustained coherence in the heart of your life and through you into the world, then we invite you to join us for this virtual retreat in the Islands of Coherence community. And together, let's put this purpose first. It's time and we are the answer. We are the way through. And then tonight, just there's an Awakening World is happening, and I'm going to be on it, and Jude Curvin and Julie Kroll and Jennifer Hill and some of my favorite musicians, Theo Grace, who's been on with us recently, um, Shakti Durga, I mean, a beautiful evening. So if you want to continue to just be in the conversation and experience of coherence and community, then, then join us tonight. And one last, um, one last announcement, I'm going to have um, Kayland play a video for us. Um, I'm going to show you this tree behind me. I don't have it on right now, but I'm going to put it out. This is a tree from my uh, deck. Um, big, beautiful tree. Uh, recently, HeartMath came and they installed one of their new tree sensors uh, onto this tree and they filmed this video while they were at my home, and it's about their new tree project. So I want to share that with you before we go today. So Kaylin, if you would bring that up. I think a lot of people that you talk to would say they feel better when they're in the trees. You know, I, I certainly do. And uh, there's kind of a magic, uh, magical energy that trees have. The uplifting and healing qualities of the forest have been talked about for centuries. Studies have shown that time spent amongst the trees can lower our stress, improve cognition, and boost longevity. We know that trees are vital to all life on Earth. Scientists have also demonstrated that trees have an incredible type of intelligence and awareness, able to sense and learn from their surroundings and remember and communicate with one another. Very little research has been conducted, however, on the electrical lives of trees. It's certainly believed that the electrical activity of trees is a really important aspect of tree intelligence and how they communicate and how they coordinate their activity as a whole, as a whole being or a whole organism. So this is kind of a new frontier. Very little is actually known. 
HeartMath Institute researchers set out to develop sensor technology that would provide a new window into the electrical lives of trees on a global scale. This project of measuring trees globally is a citizen scientist project. This couldn't happen without our supporters. Nothing like this has ever been done before. And this ended up being a far more complex thing to pull off than we initially thought it would. The sensors are already beginning to reveal some compelling findings. Our researchers found that trees have complex overall electrical patterns that may be the key to better understanding how they energetically affect the field we live in. When you consider that there are over three trillion trees on planet Earth, the potentials are pretty amazing. As we work to expand the tree sensor network globally, it will enable us to explore in new ways how people and nature are energetically intertwined. What we're doing here with this, and this along with the other interconnectivity related projects that we're doing at the, at the Institute, is to really bring scientific rigor to showing how we truly are connected, fundamentally connected, um, on unseen levels that really matter. The Tree Sensor Network will allow us to ask some groundbreaking questions. For instance, do trees respond when large numbers of people experience a collective outpouring of emotion? And are trees communicating energetically with each other over large distances? Uh, I actually believe they are, uh, and I hope we'll be able to, to show that. I don't know, this is, again, uh, this is real, this is true science. I'm really excited to see what we might uncover in the future to help kind of shed some light on that, uh, you know, those kind of powerful feelings that people get from nature and living things and particularly trees. And my hope is when people start to see the, the real science that shows that what we're putting out in the fields, whether that be feelings of frustration and anxiety or fear or anger, versus when we're really <laughs> feeling kind, compassionate, more loving, that that really does matter and that affects other living systems. I think as more and more people have an opportunity to learn about our relationship to trees and the and like real connection that we have, the more that we're going to start caring for this planet, caring for the trees, and caring for each other. To support the HeartMath Institute Tree Rhythms Research Project, donate today at heartmath.org slash trees. Beautiful, I love it. So I just put a link in the chat. They're in, actively in a campaign to raise some money for their tree sensor project. I'm gonna be able to start reporting what's happening with my tree grace here as we connect. It's pretty exciting um, that this new way in which we're registering how uh, the quality of our coherence, how affected we are by life around us because we really are inseparable from life. That's what we're really beginning to discover as we drop more deeply into this coherent play, place of presence inside of us and begin to open up to the energy of the divine moving through us, life innovating through us in partnership with life. So we are going to end with a transformance video that Gary Malkin and Sarah McCrum uh, created for World Unity Week last week. And I thought it would just be a beautiful one for us just to take a moment to integrate our experience together and pulse the planet with our love today and every day. And I really wanna encourage you to jump in and join us for the virtual retreat. It's a field where if you're really ready to put this purpose first, that you will be empowered and, and inspired to do so. And there is scholarships available if that's um, something that's stopping you, but jump in because Monday we're closing the seal before the fireside chat, and then we'll be on a journey of an intentional community process together. So I hope you'll jump in. All right. Kaylin, let's play our closing video and blessings to everyone. Thank you. Thank you for showing up today and adding your love and presence. As we come to the end of our time together, 
let's integrate what we've experienced with each other. Let's appreciate what's been created through our joint presence in the same space. Let's be grateful for each one of us and for ourselves and for this unique experience that we have shared. And let's take it forward into our lives. and let the ripples of unity move outwards from us, touching those around us and those around them and those around them. Traveling all the way around the planet. Thank you, everyone. I just saw that there was a request in the chat for the scholarship fund, and I, I did put it in there, but also if you go to the page, the Islands of Coherence slash retreat page, the link is there, and you scroll down to where you can register, there is a scholarship link there, and it asks you what you can pay and at why you would want to join us. Right, so we want people who actually really want to make a commitment to themselves and to the good of the whole. Uh, so please check it out and, and sign up before Monday. And yes, let's take this and just keep rippling it out into our bodies, have it nourish our cells, nourish our surroundings and ripple out into the world. It's what we need most right now. So thank you everyone, blessings. Have a beautiful day. Thank you, Martinia, too, for the translations. Appreciate it. Yes, blessings to all.